Father, we thank you for this opportunity to, to draw together, to draw close to you. And in this moment, I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you would decrease me in every way. This is not my platform. This is the platform of the Holy Spirit. And I ask that my voice would not be the voice that is heard, but Father, you can use me. I'll be your vessel. And I ask God that the words I say not be my imagination, but your revelation. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome again to the 66th Annual Observance of the National Day of Prayer. Amen. The theme this year is a wonderful plea and prayer to God, and it is this, for your great name's sake, hear us, forgive us, and heal us. Well, our loving and merciful God has already provided a way for healing, forgiveness, and answered prayers for his great namesake. Ladies and gentlemen, faithful followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are his great namesake. My name is not Damian Jackson or Kennedy or Washington. My name is Damian Tibbs because my father is Edward. I am my father's namesake. And when you are a believer in Jesus Christ, when you have been adopted into the family of God, you become the namesake of the great and mighty God. We are his namesake. And he has already given us an outline on how to get prayers answered. Second Chronicles 714 says, if my people, that's us, that's the blood-bought church of Jesus Christ, if my people, which are called by my name, I told you we were his namesake, called by his name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear their land. We are his people. We must all come together because there is no pure denomination. There is only pure religion. Denominational walls in this city must fall to the ground and they must fall hard. Jesus. We can no longer afford to have 800 different churches flying 800 different flags. We must all come under the blood-stained banner of Jesus Christ. Jesus. The things that have been set up to divide the bride must be discarded, and pure religion must be established for God's great namesake. What is pure religion? James 1.27 says this, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. That is what churches must begin doing. We must bind ourselves together and feed the people and love the people and encourage the people and stay spotless from the things of this world. There is one Lord and Savior and his name is Jesus Christ. He's coming back for one bride. He's coming back for one church. And we must stand up and we must say we will not be divided by denominations. We will not be divided by pastors. We're going to stand up and we're going to represent the kingdom of God here on earth. That is when this nation will change and that is when God will reach down and hear from heaven when we become one. The thing is this. We always want to hear God. We always want God to hear us and then to take quick action. Well, I'm here to tell you today that the delay is not on God's end. The problem is that we hear and then do nothing. We must be doers of his word and not hearers only. It is obedience to his word alone that releases forgiveness and healing in this land. Second Chronicles 7.14, there are four keys to release the hand of God. Humbleness, prayer, seeking, and turning. Jesus, when he was in the garden, said this, Nevertheless, not my will be done, Lord, but let thine will be done. Amen. Brothers and sisters, there is no other way. We must bind together and we must do what has been outlined in the word of God. And then we must do this. We must say, nevertheless, and then we must pick up our crosses. There's that word cross. 
You see, we have been drifting away from a Christianity that requires a cross and drifting towards a Christianity that is comfortable. But we must pick up the crosses for his namesake, amen? His church and his bride, we must rise together to the occasion because nothing brings God greater glory than people that follow after his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. We must turn away from our wicked ways, and that requires us to follow Jesus the way that he has said. Matthew 16, 24, then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You see, it is John 6, 3, 16 that saves our souls, but it is John 3.30 that keeps us humble, praying, and turning. And John 3.30 declares this, he must increase, but I must decrease. You see, the less of us that people see, the more of Jesus Christ that they will see in our lives and the more glory that he will be given. The command for the church, the thing that we should all be doing is found in Matthew 5, 16, which says, let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You see, God has already answered the prayer of Daniel 9, 19, but are we faithful and willing enough to do our part? He has heard us, he has healed us, he has forgiven us. You see, we are pointing at the world and say, saying, God, fix them. But God is pointing at his son, and his son is pointing at the holes in his hands, and he is saying, it is finished. All you need to do is do what I have commanded you to do as the church, and then we will see the hand of God in our land. God bless you.